Peter, can I ask you to say a little bit about your role as a cleft surgeon? Well, well, well I should say my name is Peter Hodgkinson. I'm a consultant cleft and plastic surgeon. I'm one of a relatively small number of uh, surgeons in the UK who uh, operate regularly on children and adults with cleft lip and palate. One of the common sorts of clefts involves just one side of the lip. In this baby, the cleft is through the lip and the gum, but there is no cleft of the palate. This is the same baby some months after his operation. And here we can see how his nose is much more symmetrical once the surgery has been done. Sometimes the cleft doesn't go all the way from the lip into the nose. This cleft involves just part of the lip and there's no cleft in the gum. On the other hand, this is a wide cleft that goes all the way through the lip and the gum and extends through into the palate. This is the same baby straight after her operation. After a few months everything settles down. Eventually the scar where the cleft used to be becomes quite hard to see. In some babies the cleft can be on both sides of the lip. We can see that this cleft on both sides of the lip also extends into the mouth and there's a cleft of the palate. When the central part of the lip is separate from the lip on the two sides it can push far forward and sit right under the nose. This is the same baby after his lips been repaired. The scars are already settling down and the middle part of his lip now sits in the right place under his nose. Sometimes a bilateral cleft doesn't go all the way from the lip into the nose. Here we can see that the cleft involves the lip but not the gum. This is very soon after surgery and we can still see the dissolving stitches which haven't dropped out yet. Much later the scar is quite hard to see. Clefts of the lip occur very early in pregnancy. A baby's face is formed of processes which have to join up beneath the nose to form the upper lip. If the processes on one side don't join together, then this leaves a gap in the lip. On one side the nose and the upper lip are formed, and on the other side there's a gap. As the baby's face grows, and the nose and lip become more recognisable, this leaves a cleft or visible gap in the lip. A cleft in the palate is a gap in the roof of the mouth. This is a complete cleft of the palate and there is a gap in the hard palate at the front of the roof of the mouth and also in the soft palate at the back. This is a smaller cleft and the gap only involves the soft palate at the back of the roof of the mouth. Some babies and children come to the cleft service with a submucous cleft palate. In a submucous cleft palate the roof of the mouth is formed but the muscles are in the wrong place. A clue to a submucous cleft palate is that the uvula or dangly bit at the back may be double. In a submucous cleft palate the muscles are in the wrong place and here the doctor has drawn them in to make them easy to see. Sometimes when the cleft of the palate is very wide it can be quite hard to spot. The palate is formed by the palatal shells which grow out from the side of the developing upper jaw. To start with the palatal shells point downwards and the tongue sits in between them. A little later the neck straightens out allowing the tongue to drop downwards and the palatal shells lift up so that they point towards each other. The palatal shells have to grow together towards the middle of the roof of the mouth and join up. If they don't meet, a cleft of the palate occurs, leaving a gap in the roof of the mouth. Pierre Roban sequence is a condition where a wide cleft of the palate is associated with a small jaw. 
Sometimes babies with Pierre Robin sequence may have difficulty breathing. When the jaw is small and the cleft in the palate is very wide, the baby can push his tongue up into his nose when he closes his mouth. This can block his nose and make it difficult to breathe. This is quite hard to photograph and this picture is not very clear. We can just see though that the tongue is sitting up through the roof of the mouth within the cleft of the palate. When the baby has difficulty breathing, the cleft specialist nurses are there to help and advise. One of the first things that they may try with you is to lie the baby on their side. Some babies need more support with their breathing. One of the next things to try is a nasopharyngeal airway. This is a soft tube that goes into the nostril and through the nose to the back of the throat. The nasopharyngeal airway makes a clear passage through which the baby can breathe even though his jaw is very small. On rare occasions a tracheostomy can be necessary to make sure that the baby can breathe safely. The tracheostomy is a tube inserted directly into the windpipe at a small operation. This baby also has a nasogastric tube. This is a tube that goes through the nose and down into the tummy so that the baby can be fed easily even though he may have difficulty swallowing. When there's a cleft of the lip, the muscle of the top lip that should go all the way across is attached to the nose on either side. This diagram shows how the muscle is attached to the nose in the middle and at the side. When the baby cries, this muscle pulls on the nose and makes the gap in the lip wider. After the operation, the muscle is in the right place and goes round and round the mouth. This means that the baby can smile and pout and move their mouth naturally. And this is continued as they grow. When there's a cleft of the palate, the muscles are also in the wrong place. This is a diagram of the palate just before it's about to be repaired. Halfway through the operation, the floor of the nose has been repaired, but we can see that the muscles are still in the wrong place. The muscles are moved to the back of the palate and then repaired. The roof of the mouth can then be stitched up.